Good morning. It is another day of working in the shop, and today we are working on the heavy wrecker. And the reason that is is because it's got to be ready for the off-road games. So at the off-road games, we are having a wrecker pole. Thursday and Friday during the event, we're going to be on the beach putting these things for their paces. Now I know I got some heavy hitters coming. We've got Murphy Diesel coming. I think Heavy D's got something coming. We might see a sneak attack from Rory. Who knows? I just know that I need to be ready, and this needs to be ready, and it's not ready. So today, we're going to... Get it ready. What are, what are we doing that with? This wrench. <laughs> so here's the deal. We've been having a little bit of trouble with the transfer case. And so we talked to our buddy Steve at Off-Road Designs and we said, we need a super tough transfer case for a super tough wrecker. He built this transfer case right here for us. So we're gonna pull that one out and we're gonna put this one in and we're gonna see how it goes. So earlier this week, the United States Army came down and visited they were down here doing some training maneuvers and they invited us to come hang out with them for a little bit. So we went out there. It was cold. It was windy. Um, they had some really big, awesome stuff and we just kind of hung out with them. So check that out and then come right back here. All right, we got a real treat for you today. We are with the 191. Today we're going to be showing you some of the equipment that they use for their off-road recovery program and we are going to be contrasting with our off-road recovery program. By the way, that is the world's largest off-road record right there. <laughs> It looks like an ant right now. <laughs> so I don't know a lot about the military vehicles like this, but I do know one thing, they're big and they're heavy. And so the recovery vehicles that they use are bigger and heavier to do that. So while they're self recovering, we're gonna go over some of the stats on this rig and we'll compare them to this rig. So what we're looking at right here is an M1981A4. I was so close. Yeah, I don't know one. What we're looking at is 984A4. I, I did that in one take. Axles on this, we got two front, two rear. The front axles are 16,000 pound axles. On the rear, they're 32,500 pound axles. Vehicle weight itself is roughly 54,000 pounds, depending on split. kit. Mine's 12,000 pounds. <laughs> we'll do the stats on this truck. It's got two nine ton axles on it. They're Axle Tech 4000s. Both of them are steer axles. It's got an 8.1 liter Chevy big block. It gets two miles to the gallon. Last time we checked it, it might get better in more favorable circumstances. Matt, we're stuck. We got a call. This thing weighs as much as the wrecker. It looks a lot smaller though. <laughs> Difficult. Well, That's too easy. Okay. All right, I'm going for a ride in this. So, in order to ride in one of these, you have to wear this and you have to wear this. We're here with Sergeant Tony. He's gonna take us up this hill in one try. One try, that's the goal. <laughs> oh yeah, he's gonna go right up it. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. A big thanks to the Army Reserve for coming down and doing maneuvers in our neck of the woods. It was really neat to see those big, heavy, heavy, heavy trucks and what they're capable of. And it was kind of fun to show them what our vehicles are capable of. So yeah, back to this thing. Okay, Tom, I'm going up. It's crazy how easy this cab comes off. We've had a little trouble with this transfer case popping out of gear and, it, and now it won't even go into gear. I could bore you with all the things it does and doesn't do, but it all boils down to one thing. It doesn't work and we're gonna change it out. Okay. Just put it in neutral and then sit tight. Okay, this is the front of the transfer case. You want to put the transfer case in neutral? No, I want you to put the transmission in neutral. Okay, it's in neutral. All right, we got the cab all the way up. We went to lunch. A lot of stuff's happened. And now the work's finally happening. What's going on here? I'm chopping holes in the bottom so we can get our shift linkages to come up into the cab. So we're ditching the cables. We're going to a manual linkage. We didn't do this originally because uh, we thought it would be really complicated to get the linkages disconnected when we lifted the cab and cables were the answer, but it turns out- We've we got have, new ideas. We had a different answer. Oh, only 
you had something to pry with and hack. I really like this shaping round end on the back. How hot is that? Can I grab it with my fingers? Well, you shouldn't. All right. But you did anyway. <laughs> Too late, and I got the one I wanted, not the one I needed. Perfect. So I know a lot of you guys hate the aluminum foil on the headers, but it does work and someday we will put different headers on. Take them out and show them the headers. Oh, should we go look at the headers? Let's go look at those. Those are ready to go in the oven. Yeah. Not only is it good for cooking, it's good for exhaust. What do you think of these bad boys? Oh, oh why aren't those on there? We With need no some, muffler. some gaskets. Look how sweet that would be. Dad, when are we gonna put these on? Soon. Well, for now, this is gonna go sit in the Connex box. I gotta go suit up and weld now. Let's see here. That goes just like that. A little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Let's let this thing down and see what it hits. I'm liking the looks of this. Is it gonna hit the transmission? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm enough to the side we're okay. Up here, in the back. All right, we've got to the point where we can separate the two parts of the wrecker. We're gonna be pushing this outside and we're gonna work on this part tomorrow. And the rest of today we're gonna be working on that. Hey, look, there's Caitlin. Okay, let's go. Right. Watch some cables going. Okay, let's see. Problem solved. We don't see it anymore. So we are, we're kind of doing the same thing we've been doing this whole time. We are simplifying the record. Okay, I need probably an 11th. 11 sixteenths maybe, or three, three quarter or 11 sixteenths. Just get that out of the way for a second. Get me two three quarter, three, uh, three quarter inch wrenches. I've never had this apart. Chad from Chad Fab did all this. Look how amazing. I want you to look at that. Look how you can just lift that panel off and you can see everything. So this is the brain for all of our switches. So look at that. It's a Switch Pro. So there is a lot of circuits on this wrecker. And there's a lot of them that aren't finished yet. But the ones that are finished, that's what runs them. And the lights are smart. I can make them flash or make them solid. I don't like flashing lights. I've got a thing in my brain that when I see flashing lights, I don't even want to say what happens. <laughs> All right, if you look right here, you're going to see a Gambler 500 sticker. And the reason you see that is because I got my wheels turning up here. I've been talking to Tate, and I'm thinking that we need to do some sort of something with the Gambler 500. And, yeah. So every time you see this sticker in the record, just remember, it's in the back of my mind. I keep it right here in the back of my mind. So we're going to keep the shifter here. We're going to hard mount the rear steer here. And then this is going to be, these are going to be good right here. So these mount from the bottom. So in the future, we'll be loosening these and dropping down. You'll see. I'll show you when we put it together. Good morning. It's another day of working in the shop and we are working on the heavy wrecker. And today we are going to split up the teams and half the team's going to work on one thing and the other half of the team's going to work on the other thing. So here's half the team right here. We're one team. And here's the other team right here. So I'm going to be pulling the drivetrain out of that. I'm sure I'll get some help from, from Jake or somebody. But what these guys are doing is they're going to finally, finally, we're going to weld up all these holes. There's like a dozen holes in here or more. So they're going to go get what they need to get this welded up. They're going to pull the seats, do all that stuff. They'll be working in here. I'm going to be working out here. I'll show you. So I'm going to be getting this all stripped down and ready to pull out and then I'm going to pull it out and then we're going to put the new one right here 
So we're gonna be putting this new transmission in, which is actually old transmission. There was an incident where this got put in park when it was going like 30 miles an hour and it ruined the park, Paul. Not gonna say who did it. So I like that transmission better than this one. This one, it may just be the torque converter. Who knows? I don't care. I'm pulling it out. Did you fix that park on it? Yeah. Okay. So, so it's a good transmission. It's ready to go. It's ready. It's the, it's the right transmission for this. So yeah, so with the problem we're having right there, this won't shift forward into high range. This won't stay in low range or high range. This one works perfectly. This, this shaft runs the front drive shaft. Um, so low range, neutral, high range. It's in neutral right now. Anyway, doesn't matter. It's boring. So you're getting better parts for this as we see. Yeah, I'm gonna pull this out. Uh, I'm gonna start working on this. You guys will start on this. Okay. Is it gonna rain today? Looks like it. This is what I love about the Freedom Winch line. I need to go around this, and look, it's designed to do it. Boom, I don't need anything, I just, it's just ready to go. There, okay. Team Bravo has their list of things that they're supposed to do today, so we're just gonna cut them loose and let them have at it. So we're picking up zip ties and a copper welding block. A copper welding block is so you can set it on the back side of a weld and it keeps the weld flat so we don't have to do as much grinding and it'll be perfect for when we do the cap. So I think I said we're going to Schultzen's first, but yeah, that's where we're going. popcorn so we had to come here for Jonah. They also didn't have any of our stuff that we needed so that's another big problem. It's another reason why we're here. So they only have zip ties. We don't have the copper brick that we need but that's okay. We can do without it. Dad, we're back! Where's everybody? Jonah! We're here! You try to do good and nobody's here. Okay, well, let's go do what we know what we're to do. Hi, lady. Dude, this thing's... You gotta wrestle this thing. You need assistance? Oh, yeah. You gotta take the bolts out of the roof and then we can weld it. I just cut them. That's what I'm gonna do. Cut them. I have just the tool. We are also working on Dory the Explorer, and we are in the new shop. And look, it's finished. It's completely done. Finito, if you will. Actually, it's not, but we are using it because that's how we do. That's how the Matt's Off-Road Recovery do. So here's the deal. We've already established this engine is junk. It's got a cracked head or a blown head gasket. We don't want to mess with it. Plus, this is supposed to be a clone to the banana. So what did we do? We called up our good friends at Golan Engines, and they sent us this beauty. This is a 4.6 liter stroker. This is the exact same engine that's in the banana, except for this one is 11% better. 11% is unverified. So the stock 4.0 of this year is around 180 horsepower. Somebody's gonna correct me in the comments and say it's 183 horsepower or some number, I don't know. It's around 180. These Golan engines are the, in the 275 horsepower range, is that right? On 89 octane. Um, what is different about the 4.0 of, of a factory one? This has an aftermarket head. I don't know how much tricks are going into it, but it is an aftermarket head and it's a lot stronger. It's got a aftermarket cam that gives a little bit of a lope. New pistons, new rods, new bearing seals, gaskets. It's all been machined, it's ready to go to work. We've been using this engine for a couple of years in the banana. It has plenty of power, it's given us no trouble. I would definitely use this product again. In fact, I am using this product again. And so are you, Robbie. So what we've got to do is we've got to pull this engine out and we're gonna put this one in. Jake? Yeah. Can you pull this engine out and put this one in? Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna leave you to it. Well, well, I'm really good at pulling stuff out. I don't know about putting it back in, but we'll try our best. Just save everything, don't break anything. You heard it here.
So we're gonna be plugging these holes on the record. We got them all cleaned up, ready to go. We're gonna be using washes to fill them up, low heat, and then after we're gonna have to do some painting. Caitlin, you ready to paint? I'm ready to paint. All right, let's do it. Oh, it's wiggling. It's wiggling. Out with the old, in with the new. Robbie got a stroker and his Jeep's blue. Caitlin and Colin had to run off and do a job. I'm still working here, not by my lonesome anymore though, because I've got Ed and Rhett's gonna be here in a minute. I mean that, Rhett. Okay, slowly go up. No, just go up, just very slowly. So this transmission has been nothing but heartache. We got it all new rebuilt with the best stuff. And then it went out and then we got it rebuilt again. And I think they did something with, there's some holes drilled in something or something, I don't know. And that torque converter just rattles, it rattles. Look how much metal is on this magnet. It's, it is covered, that's just covered with metal. There's something wrong with this transmission. And I feel like it's been modified and they weren't able to catch it when they rebuilt it. They said it's loaded with really nice, go fast, super strong parts, but it is, there's something wrong with it. It is a, it has been a real bummer of a transmission. This is a very expensive, Billet torque converter. I'm gonna show you where it goes. I'm gonna go get some oil. Look at all the metal. Yeah. Something coming apart in there. How does that look? Really bad. It's ooey gooey. Uh. Lots of metal in it. Looks like we've got a broken tooth right there. So this is what a bearing looks like that's been overworked. So I've just come to realize that the weight of this drive shaft is just hanging on the end of this. And this bearing is supposed to support it, but it's not supposed to have a whole bunch of side load. And I think that drive shaft, that drive shaft weighs like 65, 70 that, pounds. It's yeah. huge. I can't lift it up into the record by myself. See, this bearing is supposed to be this wide or about that wide. And on the on the downhill side, it smashed out like that. Doesn't seem to have hurt the race. And with the new one, in that stroker, I'm a little jealous now. Before I was like, that's a really cool Jeep. And then this stroker showed up, it's a really cool Jeep. Coming back. Okay. Okay, come on down. Okay, coming down. I spent the last hour on the phone with Steve Watson from ORD, Off-Road Designs. The guy's a wizard with NP2205 stuff and just Chevy trucks in general. And he told me that we are either at or more than likely past the limit of what an NP205 can be upgraded to handle. So he's gonna build me an SCS box with a Magnum in front of it, and we're gonna go a little lower gear ratio. We're gonna go to bigger U-joints on the drive shaft, but that is the future. Right now, we're gonna do the insane thing. We're gonna keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. We're gonna drop this bad boy in there as a placeholder till we get the SCS box in there. So SCS boxes are cool. That's monster truck stuff. That's big mud truck stuff. So that should take me to the next level um, without having to get a big obsolete military unit. There's been some frustrations today, but I do have a path to go. I'm really excited about the solutions that Steve's got for me. And it's gonna be good to get the wrecker back together for light to medium duty work, but we won't be doing any burnouts with it. We will be right back like 
We're back. I told you it would be a snap. So we got Colin and Rhett. Is Caitlin coming in today? Uh, later, I think. All right, so we got Colin and Rhett finishing the prep work on this, this cab. They're in the low tack and static stage, right? Yes, we need a I think Robbie. we're not Robbie. They've been sanding on this for a one whole month. We cut it out. We don't show you a whole month of sanding on this channel. We're not, we're not like Rob. We don't milk things out. Wow, Colin just called Robbie out. Robbie, how do you feel about that? Colin, that'll be enough out of you. I got a herd of cows out here. I got to go milk. Love you, Robbie. All right, so I have my special task. So I think I, I think I talked about this yesterday, but I don't remember for sure. So we've already established that the NP205 is not big enough for the off-road wrecker. So we're going to have to go to monster truck stuff, the SCS box is gonna be the solution to all our problems. But we do need the wrecker running because we do have jobs come in. So I'm going to put this in as a placeholder until we get that box from ORD. These U-joints are feeling good. This double card in here is in good shape. So I think we're gonna be okay. We just gotta get it in. All I asked for was a little overhead sanding and look at this prep that's going on. I am not getting yellow all over my hair. Okay, this goes up behind your head. I know, I haven't finished putting that back up. <laughs> I'm ready to sand now. Napkins in your head? They're shop uh, towels. They're more manly. I need to get the heavy wrecker done for the off-road games. We're gonna be doing the wrecker poles. It's gonna be awesome. Jamie, how many weeks away is the games? We only have four short weeks. With every passing day, the available ticket list gets shorter and shorter. Make sure if you want to come to this awesome event that you get your ticket or you're going to miss out. We're going to start masking it and I'll let you guys know what that looks like. So this is what the masking looks like. Colin's working hard at it. We're trying to make a fine line here. Robbie, I think we're ready to be hired. Yeah, Robbie, hire us. Just like that. Slide. And just, just hit the metal like this. You just make it so it's clear? Yeah, just test it. Somebody just showed up. Okay, now that Caitlin showed up, I'm gonna put Caitlin on this project with Colin. I'm taking Red out here with me. We're gonna put the record together. And so are these guys. All right, so we're here at Ace picking up paint because we don't have the right paint for the record. Ooh, what about this? What's the plan here, Colin? Do you see one that you like? These are all the colors they have. What, they want to custom mix you a can? No, I just grabbed these so I can run to Walmart and get it close. So I'm not guessing. What one do you think's the closest here? This one? Like, like halfway like between. in between these yeah. two. Okay. What about that one? It's good enough. We've got our samples. Off to Walmart we go. We love Walmart. In between those two. Why do they all look the same? All right, so while those guys are doing painting and playing with wrecker stuff, we're over here working on Robbie's Deja Blue. Got this stroker engine in. Now we're getting everything buttoned up. We still got to get the intake manifold and the exhaust all put in. It should almost be ready to start up by the end of the day. So which one should we use? They're the same, right? No. <laughs> One's oh, Marigold. Marigold. Okay, so we're testing. This one was Golden Sunset. Now we're going to spray on Marigold. Oh. Ugh. Marigold is even worse. Dang it. Oh my gosh. What happened? Whoa. Why did it peach? Why did it turn colors? Why did it turn peach? That's a totally different color than this one. And it's the same can. You got three colors out of one can. <laughs> this is the winner. We're going to go Marigold. Hopefully it works. If not, we're going to be mixing and matching. Let that dry for a minute. It, it went on really yellow, and then once it dried, it toned out. So we'll give that a minute. Just do a, do a light coat over the whole thing. It what? Is, the, the paint that you sprayed down is still tacky, so. It won't hurt. We, you so need to wait 30 or yeah. until it's dry before He's so you paint it. About his paint. He's like, I don't care if it takes two days. Here. <laughs> oh, no, 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 stop, stop, no, stop. No, stop. No, stop. No, no, I do this all the time, Colin. Except for What I... are you doing? He's gonna start a fire in there. 
Oh yeah, that's putting a ton of heat up there. I mean, that's working. Feel the heat boiling out of this door. Just Hey, so I'm worried about what some of the viewers are going to say about the paint job that my kids did on the top of the wrecker. So I'm just getting a se I'm just getting a second opinion from you. So what they did is they welded up the holes, sanded it smooth, hit it with some self-etching primer, and then they painted it the same color. It looks fantastic. So did they do a good job? Oh, they—they like, they sounds like they're running me out of business. They did—they did blow ta they did blow tack and static. You know what works better is blow torch and static. Okay. But I mean, if they if they followed my example. Do you know what's so funny about that? And my and as my audience is my witness, we did use a torch. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, you folks heard it here first. Robbie said we did a good job. <laughs> I approve. Thanks, man. That's all I needed. Yeah. All right, while these guys are doing the stuff that they're doing, let's give you an update on the Gladiator. Remember, we are giving this away at the Off-Road Games. Everybody who comes is automatically entered in. The proceeds go to charity. It's going to be awesome. So it doesn't matter what your four-wheel drive project is. Barnes has something to help you do this. You can check them out and use the promo code MORE, and that gets you 10% off at checkout. So look at this thing. The front and rear bumpers came from Barnes. The full... Uh, skid plates. We got skid plates underneath this thing. Colt from Bleepin' Jeep came all the way out here and helped us install these. It also has an upgraded exhaust. Holly supplied that. It's a Flow FX. It's awesome. Sounds great. So after all that, American Adventure Labs installed these inner fender linings. They look really great. Offer lots of protection. They did some trimming here. Man, this looks good. High clearance, high performance. And then look at this. We probably already pointed out this Apex 12,000 pound winch, but maybe we didn't mention it has a Freedom Winch line. The Freedom Winch line is a product that I believe in and I use on all my rigs. It's awesome because it just is so versatile and you don't have a bunch of metal that doesn't hook to anything. That is my favorite thing about it. It's a tree saver, soft shackle, winch line all in one. Check this out. Freedom Winch line, Freedom Winch line, Freedom Winch line. All right, we got the cab mounted and we've got the shifters where we like them. There's high range, neutral, and low range. You need to roll it a little bit. Low range. Ah, you get the idea. You kind of got to roll them a little bit. Those are both a neutral. We got the doubler right here. So low range, high range. We're gonna have to heat this rod up and we'll bend it over and up right there so it's out of the way of things but it's friday night supper's on the table we'll be back here tomorrow and we will finish this up and get it started up and get it tested and drive it around a little bit and make sure it's ready to go and just like that it is saturday morning i've got a few more things to button up on this and then we're gonna go out and test it all right i got my side all done and my, and the reason i say my side is tom has always done this side in here he's not here today so I called him, he said it's easy. So I'm gonna see if it's really that way right now. I'm not really a computer electronics guy, but I think I can plug plugs in. Like that, I did. Very, very satisfying. Now I've just got a group right here. This group right here, I think all these just plug in to the computer, so. All right, we got it, so now, I've just got to do some zip tying wires out of place and then we can do a test start. All right, we got all the fluids topped off, everything checked, everything loomed up. It was super boring, so I didn't show so you. We got some stuff here to do in the interior. We got to put the seats in, we got to put the knobs on the shifters. Oh, I've got to mount this somewhere or my rear steer doesn't work. So. That's a thing I've got to do. I'm gonna get some help putting the hood on. Spilled a little oil on that header and it's smoking a little bit. All right. 
Thank you. There, that looks better. All right, I'm alone out here in the shop pretty much. I don't have a cameraman, so I keep skipping into the future, and I do apologize. But we got the seats in, got the knobs on the shifters. Look at that, it is right there. But it's not touching, so I think that'll work for a good shakedown run. Like I said, we've already checked all the fluids, transmission's good. I did change the engine oil, check transmission fluid, all the power steering, all that, it's all good. We've got a very robust ORD transfer case in there, but it is the wrong application. We already know that. I'm just, I just keep telling you, because I don't want anybody to think that I just haven't learned my lesson after gutting four NP205s. I know that it's the wrong one. Just wait for that monster truck box to come. What do we got? Oh man, I bet you Jamie is bringing me lunch. We gotta get those Barnes bumpers on the rental Jeep. Jamie, when are we putting the Barnes bumpers on the rental Jeep? Soon. Okay, you heard that, she said soon. What did you bring us today? Some Sloppy Joes. We're gonna eat Sloppy Joes. All right, we had our lunch and during that time, Tom called and said he's going out to hit a trail called Wayne's World. I've never officially been on it. So I thought we should test the wrecker out there. And Jamie said that she'll come along and so did Peanut, maybe Lady. All right, so Lady decided not to go, but Peanut is all about it. Who's a good girl? Me. You're a good girl too. Me, I'm a good girl. So Tom's gonna meet us at the Green Gate, and uh, I guess we'll just take it to that point. Little test. Not having to listen to that torque converter rattle has changed my life in one instant. My life is better. As promised, Dig Dug makes the scene. All right, we are on our way to hit Wayne's World. We looked at it on Onyx, and I do know where Wayne's World is. And I have definitely rescued vehicles off of it. I've just never done the trail. So we're gonna learn together. Yes, we are. I don't know if we know where Wayne's World begins. We're gonna have to look at the map. So the thing that's tricky about this trail, we're using the Onyx mapping system to follow it, is this trail doesn't, isn't a well-defined trail. It's just a jumble of rocks. So there's lots of different ways to go. So you just gotta kinda watch the dot to see if you're going in the general direction. All right, we might need a guide for Wayne's World because it just meanders through a honeycomb of trails and it's hard like the the resolution of the map is while it's good it's not enough to make like a decision do we go left on this road or the one 15 feet away from it or the one 15 feet away from that so i think we just gave up we're driving to the chute i think tom's gonna drive dig dug through the chute and uh then we'll meander on back home While we were out here, we ran into Cody. You might remember him from the motorhome on the beach out at Lake Powell. So he's been wheeling with us. He's in a some sort of farm implement right there. So, so and we're gonna put Jamie in with Cody for a second, and we're gonna take Savannah and Italy, and we are going for a little wrecker ride. <laughs> Savannah knows a secret about this truck that maybe you don't know. Do you know the secret about this truck? No, I don't think so. Your dad used to own this truck. Did you know that? No. Oh, well, Savannah found out the secret too. So I bought this truck from Cody a long time ago and uh, then one day we made a wrecker out of it. All right, what do you ladies think of this? 
It's pretty smooth. Yeah. Not as scary as you thought, huh? All right, that was awesome. The, the wrecker is back on track. Big thanks to Tom for inviting me to come out and see what in the world Wayne's World was all about. We still need a guide. <laughs> we still don't even know what yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> we kind of loosely followed that trail, but we had a good time. Yeah, we sure did. So the wrecker is a success. We're just going to keep going easy on it till we can get that SCS box, and then we can do monster truck stuff. Oh, I'm excited. Flips and things? Mm -hmm. okay. Double back flips. Well, once again, thanks for sticking around, and thanks for watching. I think I'm going to do something. I think I'm going to name this winch Rory, and the other one I'm going to name Irish. Put a little plaque right there, because I stole this idea from Rory Irish on the nose.